You're watching Keystone Science, and in today's episode we're going to show you how to make a very simple high voltage power supply out of a fluorescent bulb. So before we get started, a pretty cool thing, I got my first bit of mail in my P.O. box. And so this letter here is from a 12 year old named Soren who enjoys making electronics. Thank you so much for writing me, Soren. It's very cool that you're making electronics at such a young age. And so all the letters I get from you guys, I'm going to hang up on the walls back here. And so this one, let's just put right here. There we go. Anyways, let's now get into building this circuit. For this project, you'll need a compact fluorescent light bulb, as well as a flyback transformer. Now these flyback transformers can be found inside of the old CRT TVs. CRT TVs are basically the TVs that use a giant vacuum tube inside of them to project a cathode ray image. And so these provide the high voltage necessary for those tubes to work. And so I have made a video in the past showing how to safely get one of these out of the TV as you can be shocked. And so although the quality of that video is pretty low since I made that video quite a while ago, I'll leave it linked in the description so then you guys can know how to take one out. So first we're going to want to gain access to the circuit that's inside of this compact fluorescent light bulb. And so primarily there are two ways we can do it well. One way is that we could take a screwdriver like this and carefully pry around the crevice line here. This should separate out the two halves and it should just pull apart. If you're a little bit more lazy, however, you can just use a tool like this or a saw and carefully cut along the side here. Once you gain access to it, you should see something inside like this. The first thing we can do is snip off the black and red wire that connects to the base of the bulb. As you do this, try to leave as much of the wire connected to the circuit board as you possibly can. Next, as you can see on the circuit board, there are these four pins on either side that connect up to the tube here. You can either snip those wires to get the circuit board free from the bulb, or you can just uncoil them with pliers. Out of the two options of snipping it or just uncoiling it, I do recommend uncoiling it because that bulb can be quite useful for other projects. But now looking at the circuit, it should look somewhat approximately like this. Obviously, the circuit will vary slightly based on the kind of bulb you have. These two wires here are going to get connected up to the 120 volt mains. Your circuit should have a capacitor like this, normally adjacent to the mains input. And so following the metal connections, we can see that it connects to this point, and also to this point over here. And so on our circuit board above, that's this pin and this pin here. And so these two pins are going to go to the flyback transformer. And just as a side note guys, look at how cool this pen is. This pen is a gift that was given to me by a company called Hobble Creek Craftsman. Now they didn't ask for a shout out or anything, but I'm going to give them one just because of how amazing I think it is. They make lots of different quality handmade pens and they look really quite amazing. And so I think you guys should definitely go check out his website, which I'll just put as a first link in the description. So yeah. Now going back to our flyback transformer, there are a couple of pins that you need to identify. So literally for every single flyback transformer I've seen, it's these first two pins here that are the primary coil. And so although there's a chance that it isn't those first two pins, it's very, very likely that it is these first two pins. And if it's not these first two pins for you, I found that it's normally the set of pins that have a connection that has a resistance closest to about one ohm. And then normally one of these pins down here is going to be the negative to our high voltage. And then of course the positive is going to be this red wire that comes out of the top here. Now if you're lucky, inside of the really old CRT TVs, you'll actually find AC flyback transformers. And in my opinion, those are much more useful than the DC flyback transformers. Basically, the only difference between the two is that inside of this transformer, they already have diodes in here converting the high voltage to a DC. So yeah, if you want it to be AC, you can actually take out the core and then wind your own, but I've tried it and it takes quite a while and is pretty cumbersome. So now we're going to want to solder these two wires onto this circuit board here. And so to do that, first I'm going to make sure that they have a good physical connection. And then once they have that good physical connection, we can take our solder and our soldering iron and make a good solder joint. So now the last thing that we need to do is go ahead and make a connection from these up to a plug outlet for mains. And so although this plug is a bit more thick than it needs to be, I have it lying around, so I'm just going to connect both of these wires to these two wires here. Now it doesn't matter which wire goes to which side since it is AC. But once you have them connected again, go ahead and apply some solder. Now when it's plugged in, if these two wires touch each other, they'll short out the whole thing. And so if you have heat shrink tubing, that's a good thing to apply, but if you don't, at least cut the wires down to size, and then wrap each wire with something like electrical tape to ensure that they will not contact each other. When you're done with making sure that both of these wires are properly insulated, we should be ready for the first test. For the testing, this alligator clip is connected up to the positive output of the high voltage. And so I'm going to take this alligator clip and attach it to this piece of metal attached to the stick. Although the output current from this is probably not lethal, it's very good practice to make sure, especially when dealing with high voltage, that you use a chicken stick. This way there is very little chance of it ever arcing over to me. And so in a moment here, when I plug it in, I'm going to take this and see which one of these it arcs to. The one it arcs to is going to be the negative of our high voltage. And so I'm flipping it on in three, two, one. So as you can see, we're actually getting nothing right now. 
So now I have the circuit turned back off and since we are getting nothing, I'm going to go ahead and take these two wires here and reverse their connections. It's likely because the way we're putting in the electricity to this primary coil here is going against the secondary coil. And so from that we're getting no or probably very little output from the secondary coil. Okay, so now with those two wires reversed, let's go ahead and flip it on and see if we get anything now. So the problem actually was that following the capacitor, it's not supposed to be connected up to that pin, but actually to this one. And so I guess just looking at the circuit down here on the bottom, I got confused following that line right there. But yeah, it definitely does run to this pin rather than this one up here. So I think by flipping this wire to this one down here, we should be able to see that it'll work. Okay, so now with that wire changed back to the correct position, let's go ahead and flip it on. Okay, so now with it connected up and plugged in, you can hear that high pitch noise, and so we're just going to want to bring this wire to these pins down here and see which one it arcs to. Oh, okay. So as you can see, it's arcing to this pin down here and making that plasma. And so we know that that's the other end of our high voltage coil. Now these arcs are actually quite a bit long, and I'd estimate it to probably be around 15,000 volts. Yeah, 15,000 volts seems reasonable for this. But anyways, now I'm going to solder a wire to this pin down here on the end, and then we'll try to make it a little bit more presentable. So now that we know that it works, and now with that wire soldered on, we can go ahead and put it inside of a casing. I made this casing a while back out of an old lemonade container. But anyways, it has the switch on it that I'm going to add in between this wire. So basically, one end of the switch will be connected up to the red wire, and then the other end will be going to the mains over here. And then the black wire back here I'll just leave as normal. So yeah, then I'll just have the plug running out of the side here so that I can plug it in and have a nice little desktop toy. And then as for the high voltage wires, I'll just run them out of these holes going into the top here. Okay, so here it is, all placed within the container. So although it's kind of shoddy, here's the wire wrapped in electrical tape going to mains. This is the switch right here that should turn it on and off, and then here we have our high voltage positive and our high voltage negative. And so as you can see when I flip the switch, we get a nice arc of plasma off the top of this. Here's the circuit with the cruelly made Jacob's ladder. But as you can see, it has enough to rise up as it should. As always, be very careful of the arc that's produced by this. As you can see, the arc is enough to instantly light up paper if I put it near it. Now as I said earlier, although I don't believe this arc to have enough current to actually kill you, it still might if it goes across your heart, so be very mindful of where the high voltage is and make sure that you don't get your hands anywhere near it. So this is kind of interesting. As it's going up to Jacob's ladder, I put the fluorescent bulb near it, and as you can see, it's lighting up the bulb. So now you know you can make an easy high voltage power supply out of a compact fluorescent light bulb. Thank you all so much for watching the video. If you enjoyed it and or learned something new, I'd really appreciate it if you'd leave a thumbs up as it really helps the channel. And if you would like to see my weekly science videos, go ahead and hit the subscribe button so they'll show up in your subscription newsfeed. Extra sources and information can be found in the description below to help help you guys build this. This video came as a suggestion from one of you, so if you have a suggestion for something you'd like to see in the future, go ahead and let me know in the comments. That's all for this video, so please remember to be safe, and have a wonderful day. You're watching Keystone Science. And in today's episode, we're going to show you how an FM transmitter works and how you can make your very own.